Uh, welcome everybody to uh, today's virtual briefing on aid for food and nutrition security. Uh, today with us we have Ernan O'Cleary, OECD Senior Policy Advisor, um, who will present an OECD publication on the tracking of aid for food security in agriculture. Um, the publication monitors and reports on the delivery of the pledges made under the L'Aquila Food Security Initiative and uh, Ernan will present these findings today to us. Uh, we will have around 15 minutes of presentation. Afterwards, I will open the floor for discussion. Ernan, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Christian. Um, and good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time um, uh, to dial in uh, and to participate in this discussion. And um, most of you have probably seen the um, uh, the brochure that were um, uh, uh, that we've produced um, already. So I'll try not to spend too long presenting it. You probably read it already. It's fairly brief, uh, and we can get into a discussion maybe around the issues, around the information, and and um, any further work that we might do in this area. And just to say, I mean, the monitoring of um, ODA flows uh, of aid. Uh, in general, reporting and monitoring of them is kind of a, is a core function of the Development Assistance Committee of the OECD, and this is, um, is, is very much building on that and trying to bring a, a focus to a particular priority area at the moment. Uh, and uh, Christian mentioned uh, the uh, AFSI, Aquila Food Security Initiative, earlier on, and a part of the motivation for doing this comes out of that, because as most of you are aware. Um, the DAC was, uh, was mandated, was asked to um, uh, report on uh, the delivery uh, of its financial pledges under the Lacula Food Security Initiative. Actually, this brochure isn't a report on the delivery of those pledges. Um, as, as Christian said, it's actually a, a look wider, so beyond um, the delivery of the Lacula uh, pledges and beyond the group of donors that made commitments under that initiative. Uh, and this is to um, this is to look at overall ODA for food and nutrition security um, from all bilateral donors and indeed in, in some of the information from multilaterals um, as well. So the first thing to say really is um, that food and nutrition security aid for food and nutrition security is quite a difficult thing to define. Um, it isn't a category. Uh, under the DAC uh, reporting system. Uh, it isn't even an identifiable group of categories. But what we have done for this purpose uh, is to look at aid for uh, agriculture, agro-industries, forestry, fisheries, nutrition, uh, and development food aid. And that, we've considered that to be uh, aid for food and nutrition security. So it is probably a fairly blunt assessment uh, nevertheless, most aid for food and nutrition security will be inside these um, uh, these codings, and uh, if we look at the trends on these, we may be able to draw some inferences for, for trends for overall um, food and nutrition security. And just to say that's a little bit different from the definition that we use that was agreed by the AFSI group for monitoring their pledges. Um, that includes other aspects of aid which um, ha some of which can be said to contribute directly to food security, and those include categories like aid for transport and storage systems, uh, social protection, uh, and, um, and aid delivered under the rural development uh, category. So this is a bit more of a restricted um, definition of aid uh, for food and nutrition security than the, than the AFSI one uh, uses. Anyway, um, what we're interested in looking at really is um, how has uh, aid, uh, ODA for food nutrition security evolved over um, uh, over the last 10 or so years. And particularly what's happened since the uh, food price uh, crisis in 2007-2008. And, um, and just to say the aid we're talking about here is excludes humanitarian um, uh, and emergency assistance. They are, aren't included in our figures. This is what we would consider to be longer term uh, developmental uh, aid for food and nutrition security. And if you look at this uh, graph uh, that's shown here, this shows the uh, overall volume of aid for food and nutrition security. It's the blue line. 
um, and the uh, and the left hand scale and the yellow line and the right hand scale is the proportion um, that that represents of total ODA and if we look at those two lines we can see an upward trend in the volume um, of uh, aid for food and nutrition security um, but there isn't really an upward trend in the proportion that that represents of total ODA. In fact, it's pretty much where it was um, back in 2002. These figures are 2010. So uh, it, it's pretty much where it was, around 7% of, uh, of total ODA. Uh, it, it underwent, it, as you can see, there was a dip uh, in the middle of the last decade uh, and an increase that started in 2006. So actually, before uh, the food price, uh, crisis. So the first thing we can say about that really is, is that it doesn't appear on the numbers of it that uh, aid for food and nutrition security is an increased priority, at least in terms of, um, uh, of volumes of aid. Um, just on the L'Aquila pledge, um, there, uh, the, the basic information on this is contained in the brochure and uh, this is the situation as it was earlier on this year, March or April this year, in terms of the delivery of, of the pledges. Uh, you can see that in um, we have the countries down the left-hand side of this chart and the um, bars going out to the right, uh, there's in principle three bars in front of each country, uh, the top one uh, being the pledge, uh, the middle one being the commitment and the bottom one being the disbursement. Um, and those are vol the volume. Uh, the volume figures. And by and large, you can see that the commitment of funding um, is pretty much complete. And in some cases, people have committed more than they actually, than actually uh, pledged. Disbursements in total are still around 50%, or were then still around 50% um, uh, of, of pledges. Um, so, I mean, that's something that you might expect. Uh, the, the pledge is over a three year time period, but um, significant increases in funding do take time to uh, to program and uh, and, and disperse. Um, but looking at um, overall um, bilateral ODA for food and nutrition security, these are the donors. Uh, this is the donors uh, tables of what donors are um, the volumes that uh, different donors are present are, are um, providing. Um, the column on the left shows the uh, ranking in volume terms and the column on the right shows the ranking in uh, percentage terms. So um, the, the highest ones are up there, Canada uh, at 12% of ODA uh, went for, to, into the categories that were considered for food and nutrition security um, uh, and so on down. But quite a lot of countries there grouped around the uh, the overall average for bilateral donors, which is uh, which is seven percent. Um, just uh, before I get on to this one, this is um, uh, looking at um, aid for uh, agricultural research for development, which is one of the categories um, uh, under the um, uh, uh, under aid for food nutrition security. The overall, uh, in, in general, the distribution of aid um, within what we've considered food and nutrition security, the distribution by area of expenditure hasn't really changed very much. Um, with the, the large majority of it, 60% or so, going to agriculture, 22% uh, going to development uh, food aid. This area, um, agricultural research for development, gets about 4.6%. Um, uh, of aid uh, and nutrition gets about 3% of overall aid for food and nutrition security and that is again is pretty much where it was uh, at the beginning of uh, the period we looked at 2002. So again despite a, quite a strong focus uh, on nutrition that hasn't yet uh, or hasn't as yet anyway transformed transferred into um, into an increase of, uh, of, of dispersing um, in that area. Um, one of the reasons just for throwing up this um, uh, um, chart, I think it's quite interesting because um, it looks at agricultural research and then looks at it in relation to other areas that are linked to research. And uh, the, I don't know if it's blue or mauve, that, uh, that color uh, in the bar 
Um, but uh, that's what is coded under the Agricultural Research Code. And if you compare that to, for example, agricultural extension, although the amount for agricultural research is only 4.6%, the amount for agricultural extension is, uh, is actually significantly, uh, significantly lower. Um, the recipients then. So this now is not only bilateral aid, this includes multilateral aid. Um, and we're looking at data for 2010. So our data on multilateral aid is pretty good uh, at this stage. At the beginning of the last decade, it, it wasn't so good. Um, so if we look at the, the recipients of this um, longer term uh, development uh, aid for food and nutrition security, and the volume, the top 20 recipients in volume terms are there on the left um, of the uh, of column, and uh, in per capita terms, um, on the right. And as you can see in per capita terms, there's quite a big variety, you know, quite a big variation. We have countries with, uh, you know, 15, 20 dollars um, per head of population in, in terms of uh, food aid, and down to, um, down to, um, well, in the top 20, down to 9.3, but as you'll see on the next slide, uh, down considerably lower than that, including some of the countries that are um, where food security is uh, is, is a, a serious problem. So, um, and looking at that, we have these two tables here. Now, these are not, bear with me, these are not uh, um, what you might call geopolitical definitions of the Horn of Africa or the Sahel. Uh, these are more the countries that we would, um, that, uh, that were seen to be um, in, in trouble. Uh, or at risk and vulnerable during the crisis um, of uh, in, in the Horn and then and then in the Sahel last year. So um, and in those you can see that uh, the per capita um, levels of assistance. Again, remember this is the the right hand sorry the right hand column in these uh, two tables is the per capita uh, assistance for um, uh, in terms of long term. Uh, aid for food nutrition security. We have, for information purposes, in the first column, uh, put in the emergency food aid provided in the um, uh, in the year. But you can see that the per capita amounts for some of these countries are quite low. And in fact, none of the countries that we've listed there in the Horn of Africa uh, make it into the top 20 list of per capita uh, recipients. Um, a number of the ones uh, that are on the Sahel list. Uh, do. And the last thing um, that we did uh, was also to try and look across um, the allocation of aid for food and nutrition security uh, across all countries in terms of uh, the number of uh, hungry people. So it's an attempt to see how well in aggregate aid for food and nutrition security uh, is allocated uh, to need. And um, we did this. Um, we did this in two ways. So uh, this is basically like a, a Gini coefficient, uh, if you want to put it that way. So that's the um, um, the diagonal line. The diagonal blue line represents um, what the distribution of um, of food aid would be. Uh, if it was perfectly distributed. In other words, if the total amount of food aid was divided up and distributed across countries uh, in direct proportion uh, to the amount of undernourished people that there were in, in that country, then the, um, uh, the delivery would track along the, uh, the blue line. Um, and the um, mustard colored line below it is the uh, is the reality uh, of, of the situation as far as we could uh, as far as we could figure it out. Uh, the of course defining the number of hungry people or defining need in terms of undernutrition is um, quite a, a debated area. So we just use two things. One of them, the one on the left, is the uh, number of undernourished um, as um, based on um, uh, FAO. Uh, figures and the one on the right is uh, using uh, the rate of child under five stunting uh, as being a proxy for uh, the levels of undernourishment. And you can see there is actually quite a 
distinct difference between the two of them. So the, the, as I say, the gap between an ideal distribution and uh, the real one um, is, is the area between the two lines. Uh, and if you use that to make an index, uh, on the left we can see that the kind of the index of inaccuracy, so to speak, uh, is 0 0.52, and in the column, in the graphic on the right, the index of inaccuracy is 0 0.66. Now, um, that's not, um, you know, in a way, it's important to remember that those are aggregate figures, you know, because um, an individual donor um, might make a, a, a very rational and a very well targeted distribution of the food aid. And in fact, all of them could, could do that, and you still wouldn't come up with an aggregate well targeted food aid. Because clearly, you know, for, for one donor, particularly a small or medium sized donor, to try to target, to distribute its aid across all. Um, uh, across all areas of need wouldn't make any wouldn't make any sense, but um, clearly the aggregate result doesn't appear to be all that good. Um, we tried to, to uh, by way of comparison, uh, to look at um, a, a aid distribution mechanism that does have a, a targeting mechanism. You know, it's you know given that food aid for food and nutrition security does not have an aggregate uh, coordination or, or targeting mechanism. So we, we looked at either funding uh, in, relation to, um, in relation to poverty expressed in terms of per capita GNI. And there is a, a, a targeting mechanism there and that showed a, a better coefficient at 0 0.45, but still, um, still not all that great. Uh, the last, just to finish up, just to say, I suppose the the, the um, main points that we, we would make out of this um, with the, this brochure is really, um, as I said already, that uh, aid for food and nutrition security has risen in volume, but not as a proportion of ODA. There isn't really any apparent change in the trend after uh, the food price spike um, uh, towards the end of the last uh, decade. Uh, and the uh, most prices prone countries don't appear to be particularly targeted uh, for longer term um, assistance in this area. Uh, and in aggregate, um, uh, ODA for food and nutrition security is not particularly well allocated uh, to the incidence of hunger. And I think the other point that's important to make um, as a sort of a caveat for all of this is that the data is really not very good and this analysis um, is, is pretty blunt, you know, and we could do a lot to um, uh, to improve uh, the way we, we report um, our aid for food and nutrition security, um, and that would make it possible to do a, a much more, a much sharper and uh, and uh, and better analysis. And um, so that's it. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions um, uh, or ideas, I'd be delighted to hear and try to respond. Yes, thank you very much, Ernan, for uh, your interesting presentation and for summarizing a huge amount of information in a very short time. Um, I'm sure that there's a whole lot of questions coming in now. Um, therefore, I would like to open the floor now for discussion and a Q&A session. Um, I can see already that Flavio would like to ask a question. And uh, Flavio, I would hand over to you. And especially thank you to Hernan because uh, I found the, the, the document very interesting and uh, we in our uh, organization we, we, we are looking for to, to do the same type of document more or less because uh, for our bilateral aid uh, on, uh, on uh, rural development, agricultural and food security and this is my first uh, Little question. It's um, um, related with the with the code. I understood that you you do not uh, utilize the same code of AFSI, and we have made the same for our uh, doc document that we are, we are preparing. But the point that we have included uh, the the humanitarian and emergency food aid and you not as the OECD. But also you have excluded, as we have done, the social protection and infrastructure. 
Um, I do not understand why you have excluded the rural development code, and it could be interesting for me to understand why. Um, uh, a second point is consideration. It's a good idea to exclude the, the, the humanitarian uh, aid, food, and emergency, and uh, to, to, to include the, uh, that one after, just to show the difference between the long term uh, uh, project and uh, what we can call short term or emergency uh, project. The point is that why you do not consider the rural development as a sort of long-term contribution to the, the food and nutrition security. Thank you very much. Thanks to Erna. This is actually a very, very useful uh, report and we've circulated internally. Um, it's very timely also for us because similar to, uh, to Flavio, we're also doing a uh, portfolio review of CETA's food security strategy and I've got it all up on my <laughs> computer right now. Um, and uh, similarly, we use a slightly different um, coding practice. Uh, so I would be interested to, to, to just um, uh, compare. Um, but my question actually, maybe just, just to follow up on, on Flavio's question, but uh, your analysis on agriculture research for development, I noticed it focused uh, exclusively on bilateral aid. Uh, was there a reason why the multilateral research wasn't included in that analysis? Well, uh, thanks very much for those questions. Um, uh, Flavio, the um, reasons why we left out um, some of the AFSI, um, uh, some of the AFSI components, so, um, essentially those categories uh, of um, age that are considered under the, in the AFSI reporting and not considered here, where, as I said, transport and storage, social protection and rural development. And in each of those, when we are reporting on the um, uh, on the delivery of the AFSI pledges, we asked the uh, reporting donors uh, to give us a, um, a percentage of that, that aid, the aid in those categories that would be considered food and nutrition, uh, for food and nutrition security, or for food security. Uh, and in, in this analysis, we didn't have the opportunity to do that. So uh, it's, the problem is the inclusion errors, that in transport and storage, social protection and rural development, there would be large, large amounts of, of aid which is not connected to, um, uh, to food and uh, nutrition security. I mean, even with the categories that we picked, there would still be inclusion areas and for errors. Uh, and also, because we left out those ones, because we opted to leave out those ones, there will also be exclusion errors. I think um, this gets, you know, this points to the problem that we have uh, in terms of the data, and it would be good to to have um, some thinking about how we could uh, how we could actually improve things. As, as regards the um, the humanitarian aid, yes, um, the I mean we we do. You're right, of course. It, it, this is uh, it's very interesting to look at the two side by side because, of course you would feel there should be a relationship between them. You would feel on the one hand that countries that, that required uh, over, over time regular periodic uh, amounts of emergency aid um, uh, for food security that they would, they would kind of logically be targets for longer term, uh, for longer term uh, aid as well. So it is interesting to look at, um, um, uh, at both of them. And we do do that a bit but um, only in terms of the recipient analysis um, uh, and uh, only in terms of the, of the horn and, uh, and uh, the Sahel. And as re with, in regard to Nikita's question about the, um, uh, a, a, the AR4D, Agricultural Research for Development, um, uh, actually uh, the only reason that we did that um, was because uh, our, our data on um, uh, on uh, multilateral aid isn't as complete and we um, weren't sure whether we were going to put it into the overall analysis and um, uh, uh, whether we we're going to put it into the overall analysis or not uh, and this piece on um, uh, agricultural research and development was done before we actually did the overall piece and when we had done that we hadn't actually decided to put in the multilateral aid and um, we could now do it you know and we're, we're certainly uh, looking at um, updating this uh, brochure um, uh, before the next ASTI meeting.
So uh, we can look at putting that uh, putting that uh, information in there quickly if you need to. Thank you. Any more comments on that or other questions? If I, if I can, um, again, uh, the, 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 the point was about, ex I agree that social protection infrastructure, I, I remember this exercise that we have done within the AFSI was quite hard to define what part of the social protection and what part of the infrastructure could, could be encompassed by the, 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 within the, the, the exercise of AFSI and um, food security. But the point uh, that uh, is not clear for me is about the rural development. Why, why have you excluded the, uh, the rural development code? Flavio, uh, the, the point really is that we, uh, including it sort of assumes that all, rural, all aid for rural development um, a, can be considered as aid for food and nutrition security. Uh, and the general principle we took was that those ones uh, that we had used under AFSI, um, which for which the reporting donors were to provide an indication of what proportion uh, should be considered to be for food and nutrition security. Well, we left those out of this um, uh, of this um, categorization, and we basically used this um, AFF um, um, plus approach, which is agriculture, food, and fishery and then the nutrition and development through there. And, um, you, you know, I think the, the, the discussion around what codes should be in and what codes should be in, what codes should be out is a very, um, uh, is a very relevant one. I think somebody has a microphone on. I can hear my voice coming back again. Uh, no. Sorry about that. And um, what I'm saying was the discussion of what codes should be included and what ones, uh, uh, shouldn't be is is an interesting one, but in in a way the coding um, under the current coding system it just isn't possible to get to an accurate an accurate description. You're always going to have inclusion and exclusion errors. Uh, we can do better than we have done in this. I don't think there's any doubt about that. We can look inside the agriculture categories. We can look inside the forestry categories. We can look inside the fishery categories. And we could try to, uh, you know, we could take out some things which we think might and uh, shouldn't be there. We could try to do that. Um, but even doing that, uh, it will be a bit limited. I think if, if we want to improve the, um, um, if we want to improve the ability to analyze um, and to track um, um, ODA for food and nutrition security, we need to look at how we are reporting, you know. Um, even within the current coding system. I think there's a, um, a, a lot of opportunity to, um, uh, to provide more information in the way we are reporting our aid, uh, just in terms of simply simple things like better descriptions of what the in interventions are, um, uh, even including um, uh, you know, key words like food security in, in, in descriptions. And would, would make things a lot more uh, analyzable. I think um, that's something that we, we, could, we could think about uh, trying to do if we get a, a group of donors interested um, uh, to, uh, to, to take some initiatives uh, in, in terms of, of, of doing that. I know, and Nikita is, is, is aware of it and involved in, that under the AFSI group, um, there is interest in doing something like this in terms of um, uh, of the funding for agricultural research um, uh, to improve reporting uh, on it. I don't know, does that answer your question, uh, Flavio? Yes, thank you. I, I, I think it, it's clear um, my approach that uh, I, I tend to consider rural development as 100% <coughs> uh, in, included in uh, nutrition and, and um, Food security, but probably I'm wrong. It's not really 100%, and probably there is a percentage that uh, uh, we have to enter in the in the detail of the project just to to know um, how much we 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 have to consider uh, of the rural development uh, uh, belong to the food and nutrition security. Uh, thank you very much. I think that you you. You, it's very useful, and maybe within the, the, the platform, we have to consider a sort of uh, uh, thinking about uh, uh, 
how we can report eventually as a community on uh, not only my, my attitude is just not only to consider food and nutrition security, but in general our uh, commitment towards the, the rural development, agricultural and food security. And uh, eventually just to analyze if the AFSI code are still, uh, are still available or eventually how we can contribute more or define better the, the, the code to utilize and uh, how to report to that. Thank you to, to everybody. Thank you very much, Flavio, for this input. Uh, I can see there's another question uh, from Marie Law. Mm, yes, thank you. Um, thanks for the presentation. I think it was very useful to get some uh, detail on that. Just for your information, we had quite a big debate internally when we got the brochure a few weeks ago. Um, probably like other donors, we calculated very differently. We normally communicate that we invest 200 million Swiss francs, which is approximately 200 the US dollar, and then in the in the graph we are at 70. So we ask our statistics uh, department to try to explain this huge difference. You can see here Switzerland 72, I think. Yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, we, we had military in state. We had another um, economic uh, development sector. We have all the rural development uh, in it. And we also add actually, um, we make a, a, yeah, a, a calculation of our contribution to uh, World Bank and, and uh, other development banks and trying to see what are these institutions investing in, in food security, etc. I think it's a, it's a huge challenge, especially because uh, uh, to compare actually the figures from the last 10, 10 years, we used to have agriculture, then rural development, then food security, and then food and nutrition security. And we can't really make a, a, a sound analysis of, of the evolution actually of of the investment, we, we used to say that Switzerland did not uh, decrease uh, the support into agriculture and food security as such, but then we can't really prove because the 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 credit are changing. So um, yeah, I think it's it's something we, we should continue to, to discuss, and it was really useful because it it uh, triggered also quite some discussion internally, as you can imagine. Yes, I, I'm, I'm sure it does. Uh, it is, um, of course, anything that you provide to FAO or to EFAD or um, or the World Bank for Agricultural Programs or the Asian Development Bank or anywhere that won't appear here. And um, in terms of the bilateral, because it is bilateral aid, uh, but it will appear in the uh, it will appear on the recipient side uh, of this analysis. So you know, you, um, if you if you compare the bilateral aid to what we see recipients getting, uh, there'll be quite a, a significant um, difference there. And undoubtedly, I think um, the you know there's, there's, there are changes in the way that people deliver aid, which which affect uh, the um, uh, which which affect uh, the way it is coded. You know, so I mean, if you're providing, for example, general budget support to a country. And um, there is money in that that is undoubtedly going for uh, for agriculture or for food and nutrition security um, as well. Okay, thank you, um, Nikita. You had a follow-up question, yes? Yes, thank you. Um, I guess just following up a bit on the, this discussion around coding, um, it's obviously going to be a big challenge. We've all got separate uh, interpretations. You know, I was just looking right now uh, at our numbers and. Uh, um, you know, we're estimating at about 22 to 25 percent of our portfolio uh, in food security, as opposed to what you've indicated at 12 percent. But um, of course, we throw in, you know, emergency food assistance, and we also calculate um, what we give to the multilateral institutions. So I think that's where the, uh, the discrepancy comes in. Um, but I think I think what you've done is a great thing because we're not ever really going to come to uh, a full agreement or consensus on what can we define as food and nutrition security in terms of the codes. Um, and I think the OECD definition gives us sort of the, the lowest common denominator 
and then each donor can take that and, and exclude some and throw in some, um, depending on you know the bilateral, the emergency food assistance, the rural development. Um, you mentioned budget support. Well, we code our budget support uh, accordingly. Uh, ten percent ag or ten percent ag research, for example. Um, so we're all going to have different methodologies, but I think to have the OECD as that, as that base is, is very useful. Um, the other challenge we're having internally, um, so not even within donors, but internally, is, is how we divide up the codes uh, between our different strategies. Um, we have a strategy on sustainable economic growth, a strategy on food security, um, and a strategy on, on children, youth, maternal child health. And there's obviously a lot of overlap. Um, it's hard for people who want to program in economic growth to code agriculture because agriculture is a code that's for food security. Um, likewise, there's overlap between uh, uh, us and health in terms of nutrition programming. Um, so what we're trying to get away from, or not get away from, but consider is that there's coding for activities, but there's also the results that are intended. Um, and that's something that's obviously we're not capturing in this, in this case. It's just what are the activities that we're funding. Um, so I think what's really useful is if, I don't know if the OECD can actually share some of their methodologies. I think, I think this paper that you produced is a really, really useful analysis. Uh, it's, it helps us with the accountability. Um, it's a very transparent tool. Um, and uh, you had mentioned you're going to be updating. So one of my questions was, is this updating for the ASTI meeting in Mozambique uh, in December? Um, but going back, it, it would be useful if, if we, if you can share some of your methodology so that we can then use some of the same type of analysis internally. Um, and at least there we're, we're kind of harmonizing in a way uh, all the different types of calculations and analysis that we're doing. Um, so maybe we can continue this conversation offline, but I would really uh, appreciate learning uh, you know, how you put together some of your graphs and figures, especially some of the Gini coefficients. I think we're uh, kind of taking it to that next level, which I think is, uh, is what we're being asked to do. And it's often challenging. Thanks a lot, Ernie. Thanks very much, Nikita. Um, uh, and yes, we will we'll update it for the uh, Mozambique uh, APSI meeting, but um, uh, basically using the same approach and putting in um, putting in more data. Um, but I think it would be very good to have a, a discussion on the methodology. And indeed, not exactly on the coding. I think you're absolutely right when you say there'll never be agreement on a coding definition. Um, and the problem with coding is, you know, we're trying to, you know, we have a, a centralized um, system, and this is uh, it's recording uh, data that very different organisations put into it, uh, with very different ideas about even what the code represents, but also. Um, you know, when you think of things like food security or social protection, people have very different interpretations of what the component parts of that. So something that is, is clearly there's an argument to go into one code, uh, is that in food security or not? But the question of whether it goes into food, whether it's in food security or not, or social protection or not, that the answer to that will differ widely across, um, across donors. I think what's important actually in a way is, is not to try to impose a definition but to promote a use of the CRS system and, a rep and, and facilitate a reporting in which donors are able to express um, their opinion as to whether this particular piece of expenditure is, in, is food security or is social protection or is water or whatever it is. Um, and I think that it is possible uh, to do that without, you know, um, Without looking at the coding system, in other words, the coding, the codes are only a couple of columns in the um, in the CRS system. There are a lot of other data fields which have a lot of information in them, and uh, we could use those to give much more precision about what uh, what are actually happening, and to and we can use them to define things as food security or not. And I think it'd be interesting to have a methodological discussion on that. Uh, and how we might go about uh, how we might go about doing it. Okay, thank you, Alan. Um, Rosaline, you had another question. You were raising your hand for a long time. Yes, thanks, Christian. Um, hi, this is Rosaline from WFT. Apologies for not having a webcam. 
Um, it's just a brief comment, and it's along the lines of what the discussion has been so far about coding and everything. Um, for, it's it's clearly a very complex um, issue to try and gather this data. Um, but I think, ever from what Evelyn has said, um, it's a very useful advocacy tool, if anything else. Um, and it really shows the needs. Um, my suggestion is this, the graph that shows from 2002 to 2010, um, it would be interesting to see um, another line that shows funding for emergencies. Um, I don't know if that, if that would be the remit of the OECD or if something that could be added in by another organization in the future. But just in terms of like, the overall resource envelope to see, you know, is something being taken away or, you know, why these trends may be the way they are. And also bearing in mind that emergency might, is a bit cleaner, you know, in terms of donor coding. Um, but it's just something that struck me that would be interesting, especially thinking of, you know, these events and the Horn of Africa, the hell, or earlier the food price crisis. Thanks very much. Uh, that's a, I'd, I'd certainly take that on board and stick it in and see what it looks like. <laughs> Uh, and maybe, you know, increase the amount of comparison in the in the overall analysis between humanitarian and um, uh, and longer term aid. I think is an important thing to do. Thank you. And then we have another question from Monica. Yeah, hi. It's not so much a question as something I wanted to say towards the end of this really nice uh, and very useful presentation and discussion that originally we had thought or hoped to be able to have a, a, a debate, say, between um, Ernan and Lydia Cabral. If you remember her, she was the main author of our knowledge piece too, um, on aid to agriculture, rural development, and food security, unpacking aid flows. And Rosaline, for you, I mean, there is um, there in, in, in this study, the, the attempt to have that broader measure of uh, ARD and food security uh, aid using the CRS purpose codes and the DAC measurements from agriculture, forestry, fishery, uh, rural development, food security, and food aid. And I think, therefore, that that would have been, or that could be in the future, a possibility to continue the, this debate and as, as Ernan, you said, a methodological discussion. Um, that would be interesting and I think that would be really useful for everyone probably. Thank you, Monica. Yeah, thank you, Ernan, for talking us through this, these interesting findings. Um, and uh, we, in these ways, we hope this, pro this discussion will support and contribute to the discussion on promoting food uh, and nutrition security, both in terms of improving the data and uh, to better measurements what is done, but also to support efforts to deliver aid more effectively and assess its impact. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ern. Thank you very much, Christian, and thanks to everyone for, um, uh, for participating um, and for the questions. And indeed, I hope we do have the opportunity, as Nikita suggested, to um, carry on the discussion um, afterwards um, uh, bilaterally or in, in uh, other opportunities uh, that we have. Uh, thanks very much, Christian uh, and Monica, for uh, giving us the opportunity through the platform to do this. I really think this um, mechanism you have for online meetings is really excellent.